We're excited to announce the partnership between the Airbus Group and the Perlin Project. We have three exciting, world-shaking goals. The first is to soar a glider, a motorless aircraft, to the edge of space and push forward the aerodynamics of wing-borne flight. We want to go to 90,000 feet with no engine at all. This is a mile higher than any aircraft has been able to sustain in level flight on its wings. It's five miles higher than the U-2 set in its record-setting altitude record. The aerodynamic conditions at 90,000 feet approximate those found on Mars. The second goal of the Airbus Perlin 2 mission will be to explore the re and research the giant stratospheric mountain waves that extend to the top of the atmosphere. We ride these waves to 90,000 feet. The third thing that the Airbus Group Perlin mission will impact is a generation of young people. We want young people from schools and universities all over the world to be inspired to seek careers in adventure, exploration, engineering, meteorology. The Perlin project inspires us, in part because it points to what some of our next aviation challenges might be and how they can be overcome. And in part also because we simply love flight. At Airbus Group, we like to say that we make things fly, whether this is in air or in space. With the Airbus Perlin Mission 2, we see an important opportunity to explore new territory in the arena of flight. Partnering with the Perlin team on this project is consistent with our core values and furthering innovation in aerospace and inspiring a new generation of designers manufacturers and aviators. My Airbus Group colleagues and I are looking forward to bringing the project our engineering and manufacturing know-how as well as our knowledge and experience in the area of composite aircraft structures. The Airbus Perlin Mission 2 will create advancements in science and industry and we believe it is important for us to make it a success. I would say that uh, I think we all consider ourselves really lucky. Um, we're lucky because the Earth has saved a few of its really great mysteries uh, until we were ready to go explore them. The sensor technology uh, allowed uh, a scientist to create an image of the stratospheric mountain waves. And we didn't really understand the role of the polar vortex at that time. But we did realize that in the polar regions, these mountain waves did reach into the stratosphere. So after a lot of study and work with uh, Elizabeth, we realize the significance of the polar vortex in this whole thing. And most of you probably just this year heard, started hearing the term polar vortex. We didn't get very far until Steve Fawcett came along and he wanted to do this. And he very wisely said, let's prove that we can actually do it and let's take a fairly conventional glider, outfit it with uh, Air Force or NASA pressure suits and go see if we can get into the stratospheric wave and see if it's anything like the mathematical models show. And to his great credit, he persevered through five seasons until we finally learned how to do our, our mission. And we went up there and we did it. And we flew 17,000 feet into the stratosphere. And we're still going up. And because we hadn't completely planned exactly all the things we needed to do in the pressure suits, we decided we'd proved our point. And Steve agreed to. It was time to build a pressure cabin. Airbus America has come along. and. Uh, Airbus Group has come along, and not only sponsor, but joined in technically with us. So, um, we expect to complete the airplane first flight about a year from right now. Uh, we'll spend the following year until about uh, June of 2016 uh, in the Sierras, flying the Sierra Wave up to uh, oh, 40, 45,000 feet. And that'll be for pilot training and shakedown of the novel and complex systems in the airplane and make sure everything works before we go to Patagonia and we go down to South America in 2016, in the late summer of 2016, our summer there, winter, and, uh, and then we're going to go for it.